Hello everybody, it's great that you joined to watch this video. I hope you watched first three videos of this project named The Idea, Starting Point and Why Beneficial. It allows you to understand what we plan to discuss on our web resource. Now it's time to jump and discuss human knowledge topic. This is a basic background and current project's point of entrance to understand what we, humans, collected so far in information field. I stress the word humans intentionally. Knowledge is a result of perceiving information or, more precisely, a result of human cognition process. Think about it. Without humans, without our cognition, there is no such thing as a knowledge. There would be just pure raw data, like external objects or facts of nature, or, in other words, things which actually exist in reality and potentially can be observed. It was French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes, lived in 17th century, who partially found his answer to the question what does and does not exist in his famous proposition I think, therefore I am. Important outcome from his answer is thought of any kind requires a thinker, and thinking can lead to building up a knowledge, processed or mentally digested external information. But how can we build up our own knowledge? English philosopher and physician John Locke, also lived in 17th century, mentioned that throughout our life human mind gains all the knowledge from an experience. There are two main sources for experience as per Locke – sensation and reflection. Sensation comes in form of using human senses – our physiological capacity to perceive data by seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling or touching. Such source of experience allows us, for example, to see and recognize red objects or taste sweet things. On the top of Locke's sensation, I would like to add that human senses can be magnified or extended by using certain modern tools. Imagine how microscopes or telescopes can increase our possibility to see deeper or farther to observe details of small cells inside live organism or lunar craters. How X-ray machine can provide possibility to see through the object, so we can see our own bones inside the body. How space rockets and Earth satellites can fly so high, so we can see pictures of our whole planet and check ourselves that it's really round, etc. That's about sensation by using five human senses and modern tools. Another source of experience is a reflection. Imagine that someone had already seen donkey and something that looks striped. Then such person can imagine how zebra looks like before actually seeing one by just thinking of an animal as being both like a donkey and striped at the same time. This is about reflection, subjective experience of a logical mind's operations. Let's wrap up it and consider knowledge for simplicity as an aim and in the meantime result of human cognition. And human cognition oversimplified is a process of perceiving, analyzing and keeping primarily in human's mind external and imaginary information by using our sources of experience, sensation and reflection. Let's think why do we need knowledge? How it may be helpful? Knowing something can help to plan and implement our activity so it can affect our behavior. Have you heard about self-preservation mechanism? In a brief, it's a set of behaviors which allow organism to survive. Does only knowledge could lead to behavior or when we talk about human self-preservation? Have you heard about reflexes and instincts? Instinct is the inherent inclination towards a particular complex innate stereotype behavior. As an example of instinct, we can show child tendency to be very close to the parents at the early childhood, since such instinctive behavior is more safe from survival point of view. After all, parents in general will try to do their best to protect their kids, won't they? Instinct is a complex behavior, not a repetitive single type of action. One time it may be hugging parents' leg, another time it may be asking to take him or her in parents' hands, Next time, just running towards parent. Different actions, complex behavior, but with the main aim to seek for parent's protection or just to feel safe. Another term is reflex, which describes simple behavior, not so complex as instinct. In general, reflex is the body's automatic action in response to a stimulus or environment conditions. 
For example, if you touch something very hot by hand, your body's immediate reflex reaction will be to pull back your hand to avoid potential hand damage due to excessive heat. Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov, 100 years back or so, classified and separated reflexes into two different groups – unconditional and conditional. It was observed that unconditional or built-in reflexes, as well as instincts mentioned earlier, are innate and inherited. There is no need for you to collect any knowledge about such automatic actions. Your body knows them since your birthday. Newborn haven't started cognitive learning yet, but already can pull back a hand as a reflex reaction to the excessive heat, or will cry in absence of parents around signaling about instinctive fear of vulnerability. Another type of reflexes, conditional ones, were discovered and described by Pavlov as well. Have you heard about uh, Pavlov's dog? He observed in the lab that unconditional stimulus, given a food to a dog, leads to unconditional dog's mouth-watering reflex. It's about unconditional reflex, which we were talking a minute ago. But you can train a dog to associate neutral event with a food. For example, it may be a ring in a bell a few moments before giving a food. When you repeat it several times, dog eventually will have association, which leads to observed mouth-watering reflex once neutral stimulus happened, ringing a bell, even without unconditional stimulus, without giving food. Because such a reflex was introduced or conditioned, it was called conditional reflex. Even though it might sound like a magic, but specific conditional reflex was scientifically found to be inheritable. No jokes. Researchers at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, found a reproducible scenario when mice build association in their neuron system between certain smell and stressful experience. Specific smell was initially a neutral event for them. An associated stressful experience example was non-pleasant electrical impulse provided to mice feet. Eventually, conditional reflex was built up, so such mice developed a fear reflex for certain odor. It was published in Nature Neuroscience on December 1, 2013 in the article by Brian Diaz and Kerry Ressler. Three interesting observed facts from their lab research. First mice generation developed conditional fear reflex to certain odor, and it was verified to be inherited by two following mice offspring generations. Please note that offspring mice were not conditioned for such odor. Reflexes were inherited. All three mice generations, including initial one, which was conditioned, have anatomical structure change. New cluster of nerves, which are accountable for odor signal to be transmitted to the brain, appeared, developed in mice bodies. Information of such anatomical change was transmitted via modified DNA. Please take your time to learn about DNA in biology-related resources to understand how information from parents is shared to their kids, if you are interested. Very, very oversimplified, DNA consists of small molecules inside our bodies and carries kind of instructions which allow to build the whole body and let it to be alive and functional. You can analogically compare DNA content with a recorded million lines of software code with instructions, for example, to print the same objects on a 3D printer over and over. DNA of conditioned mice and their offspring was found to be different, changed, if compared with DNA of not conditioned mice. The article which I was reading about conditional reflexes didn't provide an answer yet how live conditions of parents' mouse were recorded and stored as changed into its own DNA before having offspring. It was published just a few years ago, and it was probably one of the first DNA-related researches about inheriting conditional reflexes. I hope this will be as a good starting point for further research and making scientific explanation and outcome to all observed facts and correlations. So maybe soon we might hear something new about humans to be capable to inherit conditional reflexes. Maybe it would be possible to find answers about type of events which may be used for conditioning for inherited reflexes. Is it only traumatic experience related to fear or not, for example? Pavlov's dog in contrary had positive and pleasant conditioning was very happy eating tasty food most of the time. But not necessarily bell ringing should build up inherited conditioned reflex for its kids. So we have more questions than answers about this topic as of now. But some certain facts were already collected and studied, as you can see. I was trying to separate several terms from each other for a reason. 
Reflex is the body automatic action in response to a stimulus or environment conditions. Unconditional and some conditional reflexes are inherited. Instinct is the inherent way towards a particular complex innate stereotype behavior. Instincts are also inherited. And finally, knowledge is an aim and result of human cognition for simplicity. While human cognition oversimplified is a process of perceiving, analyzing and keeping primarily in human's mind external and imaginary information by using our sources of experience, sensation and reflection. Knowledge, apart from reflexes and instincts, is not inherited. If you could find some scientific researches within definitions described in this video, which can provide evidence and proof that knowledge can be inherited, please share with us. I would be happy to update this video. But I haven't heard about it as of yet. So let's consider that knowledge is gaining throughout particular person's life as a result of his, her cognition. Please note that some theories and researches show correlation and evidence of inheriting ability to speak human language or realization of music ability, for example. I'd like to stress it out that it's not a sharing of knowledge itself gained by parents to their kids by just pure inheriting, but it's about inheriting ability to learn something new in the life. In other words, if I know a few thousand English and Russian words and rules to construct sentences in both languages, if I can play a couple of piano compositions, it doesn't mean that my daughter was born with the same language and musical knowledge baggage. She needs to learn language and how to play music herself. And it requires her time and efforts on the way. In the meantime, she may have inclination to a certain extent to learn them. Just to think, such inclination towards particular complex behavior reminds me about instinct mentioned earlier in this video. Maybe we can consider that such mentioned inheritance allows us, humans, to have certain instinctive way of learning language and music. You can see some references at the end of the video and read yourself Universal Grammar Theory by Noam Chomsky, born in 1928, or some articles regarding DNA and inheritance. Why we separated reflexes, instincts from knowledge? Reflexes and instincts are helping us to survive after birth as a part of self-preservation mechanisms. But they are not helping us with all possible potential dangerous situations. And one day you may realize that you need to learn a lot, build your own knowledge in order to understand what else may be dangerous for you and cannot be taken care of by only reflexes and instincts. For instance, if you don't know road traffic rules, and in case of walking on a crossroad on a red light, there is a high chance that you will be involved in a car accident. Not a good example of self-preservation. Another example. Humans give birth to kids who are not fully ready to survive without gaining knowledge. Look to the animals. They have much stronger genetic memory. For example, most of the animals can walk almost right after birth. Humans are not. Going to the next topic. We are ready to talk about the main purposes of a knowledge. They are Personal orientation in outward world Explanation and anticipation of events Planning and implementation of an activity Let's remember diagram from our first video about motivation. Do you remember how motive leads to activity? Everything starts from a need, then target and motive comes, and eventually our activity appears. Important thing to be reminded, need and target are subjective, totally in someone's mind and cannot seen by others, while motives and actions are visible and therefore objective. Can we apply the same principle to human knowledge and its perceiving? Let's look to analogical diagram. Cognition leads to building your knowledge, based on information, facts, already existing structured knowledge, which consequently leads to desire to access and perceive this knowledge. When motive appears, it leads to appearance of an activity aimed to achieve such motive. How exactly does it work if we talk about gaining knowledge? First step. We need to start with personal subjective need or demand in human's head. And in our case, the starting point within our topic about knowledge is cognition. Cognition is a mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought and senses. This is our natural need, demand, in order not to live our lives based on reflexes or instincts only. Curiosity could be considered as an innate quality of many different species, including humans from infancy through adulthood. 
Second step. Two things usually come in next. Conscious aim or target, still in human's head. We already discussed earlier in this video what is the aim and, by the way, the result of cognition process. We are talking about knowledge. Building in your mind personal ideas, notions, conceptions, images, descriptions, experience, etc. Internal vision of yourself and the outward world. In other words, building your own knowledge. Another thing on the second step to come. It's a motive, a subject of a need. In our case, we can talk about raw data, external objects or facts of nature, or in other words, things which actually exist in reality and potentially can be observed. Since people over time learned how to share and document knowledge through speech, books, ebooks, videos, etc., you can build your personal knowledge using preliminary processed and maybe documented information as well. Third step. Consequently, there is an activity coming next aimed to achieve a motive. It can be objectively observed by people around. So motive actually influencing on behavior by urging to certain activity. In our case, it's receiving information. Perceiving raw data via senses, listening someone's speech, reading books, watching videos. Remember, generally motives are objective and could be observed by anyone. For cognition and knowledge analogical diagram, there is one exceptional thing. Motive and activity for particular case not always can be objectively observed. The reason for that, we have two components of cognition, sensation and reflection. Let's mention that motive is a subject of the need can be in this case material or ideal, non-material. Sensation part is taking care of material type of motive, perceiving material facts of nature. But reflection part takes care of ideal type of motive, which is about thinking process. Processing already existing knowledge in your head to create new knowledge. This process is not visible by others. Example about the zebra coming out of something striped and looks like a donkey at the same time is exactly about reflection component of cognition. Humans cannot see such type of motive with unaided eyes. Just FYI, science and technology may allow you to see evidence of brain activity via certain sensors devices though. But anyway, equipment could not show building zebra image for external observation, at least as of now. So using preliminary already built up existing knowledge within someone's mind to prepare new knowledge using logical thinking makes it possible to have items on second and third steps, aim, motive and activity, not to be seen sometimes objectively by others. We have just finished fourth video human knowledge, when we try to discuss what human knowledge is, where reflexes and instincts are no longer could help, and only knowledge can help further. What are the purposes of gaining knowledge in general? And we finished with simplified diagram and example. It's very oversimplified view, but necessary for us to continue further discussions. Please note that lots of aspects of knowledge, theory of knowledge, were intentionally omitted. This video does not pretend to discuss all potential definitions and details, not pretend to touch a lot of science and philosophical branches. But now we have basis and synchronized simplified understanding what knowledge is to continue our further discussions within our project. In the next video through science lenses, we will try to analyze what approaches do we have to gain knowledge and why it's beneficial to use specific scientific approach among others. See you there! Thank you.